Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.1, an Eagle Dynamics FA-18C Hornet module. Welcome to tutorial 21, Slam ER Missile. This is a continuation from the previous tutorial where I demonstrated the Slam Missile, uh, SLAM ER, the ER stands for Enhanced Response, is a further development of that missile, which was fielded from the 2000s onwards, after the original SLAM missile was discontinued. Designated the AGM-84H, it's still possible to pair this missile with the same AWW-13 datalink pod, as you can see I've done so here. Changes from the original SLAM are an increase in range. Uh, original SLAM was capable of anything up to around about 60 nautical miles. SLAM ER can do up to about 150 nautical miles. Uh, an increase in the size of the warhead from 500 pounds in the SLAM to 1,000 pounds in the SLAM ER. So you know this is very capable of, of uh, breaking bunkers and things like that. Uh, and a change in the seeker head. Uh, rather than the original standard walleye seeker head, this now has uh, an infrared seeker head so you can use it day and night and it also now gains the ability to fly a path given to it by steer points uh, this is a, a feature that the original slam did not have apart from that all the functionalities of the original slam are still here so uh, main modes of employment are pre-planned and target of opportunity for the most part these both operate kind of the same um, but uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to make use of it with the new steer points. Now, the only kind of restriction here is that the steer points need to exist in your aircraft's INS. Uh, and so for this purpose, I've actually created a bunch of additional waypoints in the aircraft's computer, which we will use to uh, fly this. So without any uh, further ado, let's get on into it. If I jump into the cockpit here, you'll see that the weapons profile for the, the SLAM ER is just SLMR instead of SLAM, which is what you had before. So let's go uh, air to ground master mode, master arm on, and let's select the SLAM ER profile. Now, in exactly the same way as the SLAM missile does, it needs to go through its initial power on and alignment. Uh, this timer will count down from 10 minutes to seven minutes 30, and you will see the alignment quality uh, come down to a good value eventually. So that's how that works. Um, let's go down while that's doing that and take a look at our HSI. Uh, I've created some waypoints. So waypoints one, two, three are just my flight plan for the aircraft. Waypoints four and five are actually waypoints that I want to give to the SLAM. And waypoint six is my target. So I'm gonna do a target of opportunity attack because uh, honestly, uh, to demonstrate the new functionality of the SLAM ER, either PP or uh, TOO will work. It doesn't really make any difference. So we're gonna go waypoint six and do a waypoint designate. We now have a designated target point. Uh, with that done, I can come back across to the missile. Uh, we can see alignment is progressing. Uh, we're in mode PP, let's hit this and switch it to target of opportunity. Exact same flight levels as we had previously with the SLAM missile. Uh, so you can set it to a, a low, a medium, or a high. We're gonna leave it on the medium just now, which corresponds to 15,000 feet, uh, low being five and high being 30. Uh, E-fuse, it defaults to off. We're gonna press that once and set it to instantaneous. Uh, you can erase the slam as, as per before, and WEP allows us to set the pairing with the data link. I'll do that in just a moment. Distance, uh, that's the distance at which the sensor will enable. Uh, with the slam ER, it defaults to 10 nautical miles. And then STP is our option to enable the steer points. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, let's press STP, and you'll see that we now get some programming options up here on the UFC. You can define up to five steer points that the SLAM ER will follow, uh, and you can do that as follows. I'm gonna press steer point one, and we have an option for how we want to enter this. You can actually enter lat long position uh, arguments, but of course that's time consuming and annoying. Let's do waypoint, and we're gonna choose waypoint four and press enter. So we've now entered the first steer point. Steer point two, again, waypoint five, enter. We've now de uh, defined the two steer points that we want the missile to follow. We could unbox steer point and then it would not follow those. But if I box it again, it retains the programming. And there you go, uh, slammer ready. 
uh, that's now ready to fire. And if we take a little look down here, we can see target diamond. This is all uh, defined correctly. And let's go into the slammer display and go to mission and just make sure that we have coordinates. And in fact, we don't uh, because we defined this target before the missile had finished aligning. So that's a, a little gotcha there. Uh, let's undefine target, make sure we're on waypoint six and weapon designate again. And now the missile got the coordinates. Uh, I did it before the missile was actually ready. So station eight, target of opportunity one, slam ER. That's all set. Uh, we would have the option, as before, uh, to define heading, angle, and uh, vertical velocity uh, for terminal uh, effect, but I'm going to ignore that. Uh, the offset is not defined uh, in the slam ER, in much the same way as it's not defined in the normal slam. So this is this is us set up here. We can hit return. I'm then going to press WEP uh, and WEP. Oh, I haven't actually enabled the data link. I also have to select the data link profile, then I can press WEP, and I want to choose the fourth missile here, which is the one we have boxed. That's now paired and ready to go. So that is basically it. Well, and if I wanted to change the distance at which the sensor would come live, I can go to slam display, press UFC, and there's my distance option there. But we're gonna leave it as is. Uh, and again, as with the SLAM release type, we have three release types listed, only manual is implemented. So leave it on manual. And uh, let's, uh, actually let's press SLAM and then SLAM again. We now have the sensor video. We're on channel eight, which corresponds to pylon eight. So that's ready. I'm gonna pre-select uh, the antenna here because uh, I know that by the time the missile makes all of its turns, uh, I'll be facing the wrong way. And I'm gonna press sensor select switch to the left. I have the diamond on this display. We're ready to go. Uh, and as before, actually let's come out of, let's come out of active pause just now. Uh, as before, all the information we need is up here on the HUD, slam ER, target of opportunity, and a distance to the target. So um, let's go ahead and launch. Rifle long, missiles away, and you can see part of the reason why this missile has a longer range than the old one is that it has these little fold-out wings. Uh, and so it actually has a much uh, much better glide. It's climbing up to its assigned altitude. I told it to fly at 15,000 feet. So off it goes, leaving my aircraft behind. Let's accelerate time a little bit and we're just gonna monitor and make sure it actually makes its turns as it was instructed to. It should fly out to waypoint four, uh, which I positioned kind of northwest of my aircraft's starting position, uh, and then it should come around. There we go, that's the first turn, coming around to waypoint four. It's found its altitude. So it's basically gonna attack my assigned target from the north, that's what I've made it do. And of course, you could launch multiple slam ERs with different waypoint programmings, uh, and that would allow you to try and saturate a particular site's air defense. Uh, and this would be a pretty good t uh, tactic, I would say, especially if you can make use of multiple aircraft, because we can carry four slam ERs each, and uh, if we had a bunch of aircraft launching four each, that would become quite difficult to deal with. There you go. We're actually, I'm going to go ahead and pause very quickly. Uh, we, we have a sensor. Now, there would have been TTS or time to sensor displayed here uh, until it was time to go. And now the sensor is on. This is an infrared image, so this will work day and night. And um, you can see here, dis this is the distance to the target, 4.4 nautical miles, type of track currently being used. We're in centroid track. You have options for force co correlate, which works in the same way as the Maverick. Um, so let's um, go ahead and take a little look here. Again, FOV as well, so I can FOV in and out. And with this missile type, uh, I can actually use the TDC to move a cursor and then depress TDC and it will move the cursor and then try to centroid track. If I force correlate, I can then decide what point of the building to hit, and it will actually move to that point rather than doing a centroid track. Boom! And it hit right where I told it to. So <laughs> that was successful. Uh, and uh, that is basically the full employment of the SLAM ER. All of the other modes and features are exactly the same as the SLAM. Uh, and as I said at the beginning, you have this enhancement in the launch range. This can go out to at least 150 nautical miles. You have steer points, you have an infrared sensor, and you have a 1,000 pound warhead instead of the original 500 pound one. So 
I hope you all enjoyed that. That was a full demonstration of the SLAM ER missile. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. That's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option to join Deep Hack's ground crew using the join button below. Big shout out to those who already have. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, those people are Frantic Stone, Mr. Yeti, Griff Nizzle, Chandro Hedgevald, J.R. Walker, Mangash, Channel Wright, Storm Kimbari, Byron Farrow, Leo Netzel, Harish Rajan, and Pink Floyd. Thank you so much, everybody, and I'll see you all next time.